Hi, my name is Aubrey. I am a newly certified physician assistant and I am doing pre-PA FAQs and little video snippets. So here is my next one. And today we're going to be talking about something that is asked a lot. And I know I keep saying that for all of these questions, so it's hard for me not to say it, but this one gets asked the most because I feel like it's one of the most difficult things to get started on. And that's shadowing hours, how you get them, what, what are they, all of that. So for shadowing hours, not that many programs require them, but it is still really important to get because it helps show the admissions committee that you know what a PA does and what their role is in medicine and that you've seen it firsthand. So I always recommend getting shadowing hours, even if the schools that you want to apply to don't require them. That being said, I'm not going to lie, they can be challenging to get, especially with the pandemic. It kind of made everything a little bit more difficult since in-person things were really limited. Um, but here is kind of how I found my shadowing opportunities. So first I contacted the actual PAs that I worked with, um, I've, which is a good thing to start. So if you work in a department that doesn't have PAs, but a department, department in like the hospital or clinic you're at has PAs, reach out to them. Um, and I'll kind of talk a little bit more about how to introduce yourself, but don't be afraid to just network and the worst they can say is no. Um, so I started with PAs that I've worked with. I even asked my grandma's PA that she goes and sees for her own care. Um, I was in a pre-PA club that had PA speakers quite often and a good amount of them allowed shadowing. So I would just bug them and ask for shadowing opportunities and just get the information, act respectful and professional, obviously. Um, but even if they didn't have someone, they oftentimes had people that they knew were accepting shadows. And then um, just networking, like in terms of there's pre-PA groups that may have opportunities, um, not even at just your undergrad but like even just uh online like there's a pre-pa facebook group um stuff like that where people kind of post opportunities like that and it honestly a lot of it is cold calling and just showing up to places with your resume and just networking that way and in person and really just putting yourself out there if you just kind of market yourself as a pre-PA student, kind of just give your spiel about your background. Maybe if you have some clinical experience, you can include that. So you really understand the role of HIPAA and how important it is to make sure you keep your patients safe and their information safe, but you would love for an opportunity to see what they do in their day-to-day -day since you are wanting to become a PA and just want to learn more about the profession and their role that they play in medicine and kind of make sure you know a little bit about the clinic, what they see normally, and learn a little bit about the PA if you have any like personal connections, because sometimes they'll write a little blip on their you know, website of what they're interested in or what school they're interested in or where they want to rather. And then you can say, hey, I see you went to MBKU. That's one of my top choice schools. I would love to come chat with you, spend the day with you and kind of pick your brain if you're okay about that. Um, and majority of the PAs that are allowed to have shadows will be more than willing to like, let you in if you're professional you're kind to them you show that you understand hipaa um, which if you don't know what hipaa is i would look that up just so you can make sure you know that because some places actually have you sign like a hipaa agreement form um so i would just be aware of that and the majority of them will try to work with you uh there are a lot of pas that like aren't allowed to have shadows right now for multiple reasons so if you get a no just keep trying. There will be an opportunity somewhere out there if you just kind of keep pushing through. So people always ask if you can get shadowing hours from other types of providers like MDs, DOs, NPs, and you can. I would just say make sure that majority of the hours that you have shadowing are PAs if you do have that just to make sure that you show the admissions committee that although you did kind of scope out the different, you know, entities of medicine, you realized that PA was right for you and that's why you spent most of your time there. Um, because if you have like a hundred hours shadowing a doctor and like five hours shadowing a PA, it could be a little bit of a red flag to admissions committees. Granted, I'm not on admissions committee, so I can't tell you if that's exactly going to happen. I'm not saying it's a you know, make or break for your application. That's the reason that you won't get in. Um, but I would always recommend trying to have a good solid chunk of PA shadowing hours if you do want to kind of explore other entities of medicine and ultimately decide that PA is right for you. And when you finally get the shadowing opportunity, because you will, it'll take time, but you will get an opportunity. Um, people always ask what to wear. So a big thing for that is always ask the provider that you're going to be with. Sometimes they'll say scrub, sometimes this is casual. Never assume, even if you're going to the hospital, never assume. Some providers are really picky. So just shoot them an email and say, I really appreciate this opportunity. I'm really excited to meet you on Monday. Is it okay if I wear business casual or do you prefer scrubs? Is there anything specifically you'd like me to bring? Just to make sure you kind of 
clarify everything. And usually they'll kind of jot you a little email that says the scrubs are fine or something like that. Um, so I recommend asking that first. I always recommend bringing water if you can, um, snacks if you're not going to be there all day, and also a little pocket notebook. I didn't really end up using a pocket notebook all that much. I ended up having like just good conversations with the providers and just kind of kicking it off more personal like you know, instead of just like sitting there writing, taking notes. Um, but it's always good to have. I always brought one just in case and in case I needed to jot down anything. Um, some of us are more note takers. I'm not a huge note taker, so I didn't think I was going to use it, but I brought it just in case. So I looked prepared. Always have like a pen ready, um, just the simple things, but usually they don't really require you to take too much because you're quite literally just a fly on the wall, just hopping from room to room with them, not really saying too much usually. But all right, so that's my 411, just like the short, quick rundown of shadowing opportunities, how it works, you know, all of that, how to find them. Um, if you have any more questions, you can always comment down below in this video and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Or you can message me on my Instagram at white code chasing. I have a lot more information there. Um, and if you ever want to talk to me more personally, that is where you can message me. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day.